Thank you very much for your presentation, generous presentation, and uh, thank you for inviting me in this uh, uh, challenging conference. I hope my speech is consistent. Uh, I use the term technical in the minimal sense, in the minimal sense, and define every external or externalized investment of our bodies as technical. For instance, a stick used to interact with the ground, to test, to probe the, the, the ground. The human body shows an extraordinary aptitude to produce, increase, and refine these processes of externalizing sensitivity. This techno-aesthetical predisposition linked to the imagination, this is very important for me, the link between uh, sensitivity and imagination, is the condition of possibility of technical creativity. This is a topic of the, my, last, my last book, the technical creativity, uh, which has been and remains Homo sapiens' principal adaptive resource. Artistic creativity, I think, artistic creativity is closely linked to the technical one and consists of a free simulation of its possibility, marked by a reflective feature. Eh, you see this hand from the first uh, experience of the pictures, the, in the caves, the, in a, a lot of caves, in different uh, uh, space and... Uh, huh? They are everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Artistic creativity. To conclude, the creativity of the human imagination, I have to talk about human imagination, Caroline. I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't speak about the tree imagination, but I agree with you. You, you, you know this. You know my positions. The, uh, the, the creativity of the human imagination is responsible for technical outcomes that are essential to the survival of our species precisely because it was originally sustained by a techno-aesthetic and or uh, an externalized or extended, it's possible to use this uh, uh, expression, similar to extended mind, extended imagine, extended sensitivity, prolonged, extended in artifacts, uh, by uh, an, an externalized or, or extended sensitivity. The idea of a creative imagination goes back a long way in the philosophical tradition, as we know, uh, but it was Kant, it was Kant who gave this idea its most rigorous basis. Kant attributed to imagination, task to imagination, cognitive task to the imagination that neurosciences has only recently been acknowledging even experimentally. Kant saw that the key task of the imagination as being to connect our sensitivity, our ability to receive data from the outside world, to receive the receiving also through instrument, like a stick, to, to connect to our cognitive forms our ability to organize conceptually these data. Allow me an example of creative imagination. 
Here, branch is characterized by the objective affordance of flexibility. The objective requirements of flexibility are easily perceived by an ape, by a, a chimpanzee, who is also able to use them. But creative imagination actually recognize another affordance, also objective in a flexible branch. The human imagination adds a new rule to the empirical data. This is the problem of Kant. This is the problem Kant called synthesis, the famous synthesis. You, you know. This is the situation. Another affordance, namely, namely the possibility of charging the branch with a force that can be discharged as a ballistic push. I wish to highlight three aspects of this essential interface because the work of imagination is the work of an interface between two different uh, uh, fields. The word, the word, and our cognitive form. Three aspects of this essential interface constructed by the imagination. First, it is embodied. It is embodied. Second, it is connected with the specific emotion of technical discovery. Third is multi multimodal, multimodal, multimodal. The imagination does not work with pictures alone or image or optical uh, uh, action, but also with sensory motor schemes or the tactic practices that. Uh, about uh, uh, which uh, uh, talked uh, yesterday Vittorio Gallese. This means that a techno-aesthetic coordinates with imaginative processes on a level, a level of technical, general technical embodiment, on general technical embodiment. We could say that the imagination work consists essentially in this merger of the logical and the somatic in an emotionally marked context. We must, however, reiterate that this would be impossible without a sensitivity that is spontaneously prolonged in artifacts, an extended sensitivity. This process, usually rich of consequences, also has an effect on the original experience of the self and precisely for the construction of our technically extended bubble. This is the case of the small child placed before a mirror, an experience to which Jacques Lacan, in particular, drew special attention. Here we clearly see that the child has a deeply emotional experience of the self thanks to decentralization and to the presence of an element external to it, to him, namely a technical artifact 
the mirror. This means there is a passage through a moment of technical alienation or externalization at the start of the identification process. The cognitive equivalent of this process is extremely complex. And it occurs in the absence of language and only thanks to the work of the imagination. The child explores a conceptual sequence of the following type. That is me, but that, i.e. my real identity, is actually something else. Uh, it's a very complex uh, cognitive process performed without language, only with the aid of the imagination. We all know that this process is destined to become more complicated, which occurs as soon as we consider ourselves on a timeline. The timeline of our individuation processes, to use a Simon Don term, as time passes, it is not only my image that changes, my personality and my ethos change too. The answer to the question, who am I, becomes increasingly complex. Lastly, my self-awareness also changes and thus the very certainty that I am something like a myself, the continuity of which is guaranteed. Fractures, conflicts, and dispersions appear in the self. This critical situation brings another passage that the philosopher Paul Ricoeur recognized as a shift from an idem identity to a an ipse identity. Ipse is not identical to itself. Rather, it is the product of a labor of construction, deconstruction, and integration that occurs over time. This involves an interesting modification in the process of technically externalizing the personal identity. More precisely, a specific function of the imagination comes into play, its narrative function. Who am I? I am the stories. I am the stories that I, or others, can tell about me. My identity is conceived as a narrated identity. I would like to end by asking which technical medium is most suitable to the, to the narrated version of personal identity. To simplify, I would say that two paths unfold here. The dominant technical medium of the first is the language in our culture, in our past culture, as well as the great narrative, the great narrative universe, that can be understood as a long, we have uh, the helpful example of another uh, kind of construction of uh, a, a narrative identity. I mean the psychoanalytical therapy 
that can be understood as a long narrative experience of construction, deconstruction, and reconstruction of identity. The second path on which I would like to dwell with a convincing example is that of multimedia narration, namely the field that is already concerned with and will ever more pervasively be concerned with the identification processes of so-called digital natives, new generations. The memory archive of this generation will ever more massively be delocalized online. The arts almost immediately realized the importance of these digital archives. And let me pay homage to uh, Aaron Farocchi, who has lived in Berlin, who died three, two or three years ago, who was the first, one of the first among the artists uh, that uh, uh, conceived this uh, task of new exploration of the archives. But in this exposition, we have a, a lot of, of uh, examples of this uh, tendency. Multimedia narration. The arts almost immediately realized the importance of this digital archives. But I would like to end with an example that is artistic, that is artistic, but not in the traditional sense. I refer to an Italian experience that uh, Vittorio well know. It's Memo Film, a therapeutic aid adopted, adopted to treat certain forms of Alzheimer's and with excellent results. It consists of the following. following. A patient is interviewed one or more times, after which the memo film group produce for him a short film, 15 minutes more or less, also incorporating information gathered from other sources. This is shown to the patient every day, on twice in a day, in the idea that its reception may act as an externalized support that partially reactivates some parts of their memory and hence their personal identity. The results have been surprising not simply because of the general improvement in this patient's memory integration and so in quality of his life, but also in some cases because of a reduction of remission of significant, significant symptoms, like the control of bowel function or in intestinal function is the case the Antonio, that I show you in a short, very short uh, editing, uh, three minutes. I don't find the... This is... <laughs> Can you help me? There is not. Ah, yes, thank you. <laughs> it's the, the, okay, thank you.
es Antonio. Antonio was sensible to women and to communist party also. <laughs> okay, this is a film for a single patient eh? and it works and after this film, one month, the symptom of Antonio is uh, finished. He uh, reacquired the control of his uh, intestine the, functions. It's the power of metaphor. Yeah, it's the power of metaphor. Because he was saying he doesn't pull his pants. Yes, his, uh, but... His uh, but he was pulling his pants. Yes, 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 but this is an actualized uh, metaphor. Mm -hmm. A metaphor reconduct to the navel uh, where uh, arise the metaphorical and work like an artwork, but it isn't an artwork, it's for one person, only one person. This is interesting. This is interesting uh, because of the uh, relationship with the bubble, uh, the permeability of the bubble, uh, the physical, the somatic permeability of the, of the bubble. We, uh, I would like to end by stressing what I believe to be one crucial last point. It's a little difficult to, to uh, summarize and resume this point, but I, I will try. In Freud's great book, The Interpretations of Dreams, particularly the seventh chapter, that is an important chapter, uh, uh, less than uh, we more than we normally, more than we normally think, uh, he, Freud, abandons the by then well raked over field of interpretation to wonder whether dreams serve a function, and if so, what this may consist. For the physiology not for the psychology, psychology, but for the physiology of our brain. Uh, to do this, Freud follows the regressive processes of dreams 
today remotest origin, namely the moment when, in the absence of language, in the absence of language, it's only the imagination that works, the imagination has completed its first interactive exploration in the world environment. During this regressive process, usually but not exclusively represented by dreams and REM sleep, the imagination seems to repeat a task he had carried out at the time of the earliest beginnings. It reactivates neural sequences no longer used in normal activities because too primitive and archaic, but nonetheless essential not just to restore pieces of memory, but also to regenerate the plasticity of the neural processes. Memofilm shows that something similar occurs not only physiologically in our brain activity during REM sleep, but also in an externalized and technical form when an audiovisual text is administered. We must add, finally, that compared with verbal language, that is our most powerful semiotic system, an audiovisual multimedia text seems to reveal a greater capacity to reach the innermost stratum of the narrative identity and there be large processes of elaboration in the two senses I have indicated, memorial and neuroplastic. To conclude, we can presume that one of the functions of artistic creativity one of many, I must stress, is to reenact the oldest technical strategy with which the imagination starts to scan and organize our relationship with the world environment. And that is not unknown for aesthetic pleasure to recover emotions linked to this primitive forms of exploring the world. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for my spoken English so rough, but I tried to, to make the better I can. <laughs> thank you. If you have some question, I have to ask you to uh, speak slowly so I can understand <laughs> and not make other mistakes. If you want to uh, 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 start to the topic of, our, of your uh, question, if you like. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful talk. I'm, I'm not sure if I understood correctly that you see an opposition between the imagination and This is a big question, <laughs> not an opposition, not an opposition. This is a, a, a very important question. I have some ideas uh, on this theme, but uh, uh, we need another conference <laughs> for this. I, I, in the ontogenetic situation process, the imagination starts to work without language. But the language arises in a certain point of this evolution at the situation uh, uh, that uh, uh, pro is product in this moment is an integration between two different evolutionary processes. The process who is referred to uh, uh, our cognitive, uh, cognitive uh, capacities. An ape has 
marvelous cognitive capacity, but he haven't the language. And another ability, technical for me, that is language, who has the, the task to or reorganize the work of the imagination. Reorganized. Kant uh, uh, called this schematism, schematization. There is a, a lot of extraordinary research of the Soviet psychologist Vygotsky, Lev Semyonovich Vygotsky, on this theme. For uh, 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 since this moment, in which the integration is happened, uh, we need a, 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 a piece of time to perfection this integration. And uh, uh, more or less, uh, in uh, uh, where when we we had uh, we had seven years, more or less, this integration is completed. Uh, since this moment, imagination and language works together. It is impossible to uh, reconstruct the, uh, the 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 former situation. But the, 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 uh, our, our uh, sleep, our uh, dream activity can reach this situation. This is proved by tech, uh, 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 neurosciences. We know perfectly what is the, the, the mechanism to produce the, the, the uh, uh, sogno, uh, the, 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 the <laughs> but we, you, don't know what the function is. I, I, I don't know. I, keep yes, keep people. Keep, but I don't know. One, only one theory, uh, widespread and uh, 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 defined, the, uh, sure. I don't know. Only one. For, uh, since this moment, the imagination and the, the language work together, and this is the model of the human creativity, the model of the human, but the, the language, I summarize, <laughs> the language has the tendency to keep uh, more and more space uh, in, re in, uh, in, in, uh, in relation to work to imagine, imagination fur furnished the uh, meaning to not the intellectual meaning, but the phenomenological meaning, uh, the sense, the Sinn in, uh, in uh, Deutsch. Hmm? Uh, the imagination uh, furnished this, uh, uh, this uh, component of our semantic, and the language has the tendency to uh, keep uh, more and more space and sub subtract this to imagination. So the imagination have to reappropriate this uh, function. This is a function that uh, no nourished, nourished uh, the, the language. But language is, when you, 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 when you ask uh, uh, for you there is an opposition, yes, there is also an opposition, but this opposition is in favor to language. Uh, the imagination is the, the no, nourish, the nourish, no, not the la, la nutrice. Uh, what, what it is? Can you, can, you, can you help me for, for the... Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, mom, the mother... Uh, not wife, not wife. Medwife of the language, medwife of the language. And the, the how can I say, uh, the constantly uh, organ that allow the reference of the, uh, the language, because the language, you know, has the tendency to talk about him itself. It's auto or sui referentiality. I don't know if I... <laughs> yeah, so it's a very, very, a very, um, a strong question, a very difficult question on which we have not the 
the, the idea the, the finally clear. Eh? Of course, of course, of course. Especially if you understand imagination as multimodal, connected with tactile action and with uh, uh, with uh, motory motory action. Okay. Yes. I I have a question that was I had in mind to ask you, but it was further triggered by the image of uh, the last. Communist leader we had in Italy, Enrico Berlinguer. Berlinguer yes. I think they actually put in the memo film to, to trigger positive emotions in, in Antonio. That is. By the way, as an aside, I, 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 I reiterate that I was uh, incredibly um, impressed, we could say, by the healing power of manifest, because, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the expression that we're using uh, to uh, Underlying yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the bravery of yes. Fanny Anton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, had uh, um, an immediate uh, effect, impact on the physiology uh, the metaphor was referring to. But I, I, I want to ask you about something else. I read your books and we, we talk about that several times. I, I think it's nice that your talk comes uh, uh, in the same session as. Uh, the talk given by, by Caroline, because I see point of contact between the two of you. Uh, uh, this morning we had uh, um, a, a rather uh, realistic, uh, I wouldn't say uh, uh, pessimist, but a realistic account uh, of uh, uh, the impact of these new technologies on, on our lives, yeah. starting from uh, um, uh, having a, a, a big impact on the turnout of political election, particularly uh, very important political election, like when you elect the president of the United States of, of America, uh, for obvious uh, reasons. Yeah. Uh, while uh, this afternoon, both Caroline and, and you, I think, um, underlined uh, uh, potentially positive aspect of uh, this technology. In Caroline's hands, uh, uh, if I understood correctly, as uh, um, a technical tool that will uh, broaden or amplify or help us moving away from an anthropocentric uh, view of the world and uh, having the possibility uh, um, to integrate uh, other forms of uh, sensitivity, uh, uh, producing a, a, a more realistic uh, vision of uh, uh, our uh, place uh, in the world. In the world, uh, in the universe. Uh, it, it, it wasn't so uh, 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 in, in the main focus of your talk, but now I'm referring to, uh, to what you wrote uh, in your last uh, uh, two or three books. Uh, you seem to suggest that uh, uh, these new technologies, I, I, I'm thinking about also when you refer to uh, interactive technologies used yes. by uh, the people of Studio Zuro, for example, uh, uh, reveal, disclose, open up new possibilities for horizontal political action, if I understood correct. So I would like you to to tell us some, so that we leave... Uh, it's a dangerous in this moment. <laughs> For us, it's a, a, a quite dangerous, you know why. <laughs> because we have a, 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 a political situation in Italy in which a party who has this characteristic, or who had this characteristic, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if I, I can uh, answer you on this uh, political level. I think that uh, if you uh, interpret, if, if you uh, um, understand 
the word polis, political, in his spatial, spatial sense, like the construction of the space in which people can keep the word and defend his uh, ideas, ideas and uh, will, etc. If you understand this, you can uh, immediately uh, see that the new technology introduces uh, some important uh, uh, transformation. I, I, I can refer now an example I, I propose in the, in the conference uh, in uh, Venezia some years ago. Uh, you know that in, uh, in uh, Madrid in April uh, to, to 2015, there was a, 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 a march, a, a walk of holograms of holograms to uh, bypass a prohibition to manifest to uh, to uh, this, this is very this is the construction of a, a, a political space in the uh, uh, in the intertwined with physical space eh? uh, Mélenchon. Uh, also, as compared in, in, uh, in some uh, uh, place in hologram, etc. This one possibility. Uh, my principal interest in this moment is what happened uh, to the uh, na digital natives uh, that had this, uh, 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 this device uh, in, uh, in uh, their own. Uh, since the, the, the first age, and in this uh, device they uh, accomplish, I think, some operation that prelude the arise of a new gram. A new gram, this, this possibility is present. New gram to communicate not only a sample uh, enunciation or emotion, but also complex and complicated elaboration. I'm convinced uh, uh, of this, in, in this, but we uh, all have to work in this direction. This is my, my uh, hope, but uh, this hope is sustained by argument. And in this situation, the condition of the art, the new, the new situation of the art is very, very important for me. Uh, I was. I. I, I had a, a question for for uh, uh, Caroline. Caroline uh, before, but the time don't doesn't uh, allow this. If um, Gosh Kamachuga interact with his uh, the, the, the avatar of his band, husband, if interact and if I I know very well, you know Gosh Kamachuga. Machuga, who is interested to uh, construct uh, interaction in different at difference of uh, Studio Azzurro that evolve has had have the capacity the ability to evolve to transform with intervent the, 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 the help of the in, uh, interactor. Now the, the question was uh, he uh, he the, 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 the avatar interact with Goshka and from this arise something new. Uh, the other question was, uh, uh, do you, uh, did you see the, the installation of Alejandro Ignarritu on the Prada, Prada Foundation, Carne y Arena? Yes. Because in this installation there, is, there are new, uh, there are innovation very interesting because you can walk, you can walk, and you are naked on feet, and you uh, have the feeling, the sensation of the ground, who is, uh, in, in which there are um, some uh, sand, uh, sand uh, but, but, uh, but uh, road, road sand. Uh, this is, uh, you can interact with the virtual environment, you can interact, but if you, if you want to touch something, or someone 
to help him because the situation is terrible, you can't. And this is a part of the experience you make. I... <laughs> So you mean he exploits the limitation of the technology to uh, induce a sense yes, that, uh, yes. where we are powerless? You explore the, the, the possibilities of the new technology and uh, 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 in, in part particularly these possibilities who aren't, are not projected, are unpredictable, unpredictable. This is a pa passionate for me. It's very, very important. Uh, another example I, I made yesterday uh, to Caroline. Uh, she talked about uh, um, today about uh, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go, you know this uh, play. Well, uh, you know that uh, autistic uh, uh, ch children use Pokemon Go to go out of the house to uh, practice an experience of the space totally new, totally new. They uh, hate the space, but with Pokemon Go, they are able to go out to the to, uh, home and, and practice the space more freely, etc. Thank you. Yes, please. Slowly, if, if you want. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would consider that a false hope into technology because even before technology, I had an autistic uh, child of my age when I grew up. She went out in the streets and she opened every car which was not locked. So autistic children, they yes. remember it's about the it's about the occupation. It's not about the technology. So and what you what you addressed before exactly that the difficulty of reaching out and being in contact. Yes. Which is uh, like yeah, 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 yeah. increasing through yeah, the use yeah, yeah. of technology and through the false hopes we put into technology. Because actually, another example that I just witnessed in the lunch break a small child with mobile yeah. phone, which, yeah. which let his, her father like talk to his friend, but that child was kissing the phone. And yes. It was smiling and kissing the phone. I had to remember that image of this being sucked in there. Yeah. So, the delocalization not only of memory but maybe also of empathy. Yeah. Away from our neighbor into our distant relatives. I mean, that's, everybody knows that actually. Yes, I, I know, I know, uh, and I agree with you. But this is the typical situation that we can define uh, pharmacon. Do you know this term in Greek? Pharmacon, that means the medicine you keep, but all of the, the poison, as to say, we, we now experience, our experience, this situation, a pharmacological situation. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Vittorio talked about uh, a, a half full uh, <laughs> glass or a, a half, half empty glass. I am in the party of the half full gas. <laughs> I prefer to uh, thematize this uh, not provided, uh, unexpected situation in uh, relation to the other that is this expected and uh, 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 against which we have to fight, surely. Thank you.